Hi, my name is Tom Mavro and welcome to the Cut It TV training channel. The channel has been set up to provide easy to follow training tutorials in today's key media production software. Cut It itself is a UK based training company with over 15 years experience providing hands on training in media production. If you would like any further information about our training services, please visit our website at www.cut-it.tv or check us out on social media. I hope you enjoy the following tutorial. In this next tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to apply effects to clips on the timeline in Adobe Premiere. We'll be looking at a few different aspects of this. Firstly, how to apply individual effects to individual clips, where to access the controls for effects, how to apply multiple effects to a clip, how to reset effects, and also how to remove effects. I'll then be looking at how to apply effects to multiple clips and also how to remove effects from multiple clips simultaneously. Firstly, to access the added effects in Adobe Premiere, you have to click on the Effects tab. This is usually located in the default layout in the same area as the Project tab. In here, you then have access to a number of things. First of all, there are a number of preset customized effects that you can access in this presets bin. There's a number of color grady type effects in this Lumetri presets bin. We have a range of audio effects inside audio effects, audio transitions and video transitions. And then we have the video effects bin where you access all of the added video effects in Adobe Premiere. If I just open this up for a second, there are a number of different categories of effects. I am going to first of all, just add a couple of effects to a clip. Now, there's sort of three main types of effects in here. The first type of effect you apply and it gives you an instantaneous result and it just does what it does. Uh, there's no real specific controls for it. The second type of effect, you'll get an instantaneous result when you apply the effect, but there'll be some additional controls that allow you to then further customize and amend the effect. And the third type of effect you put on and you don't really see anything change until you actually go in and amend the controls for the effect itself. Let's put an effect that gives us an instantaneous result on. I'm going to go to image control and I'm going to grab the black and white effect here. Now, before you put an effect on a clip on the timeline, it's a very good idea to place your timeline playhead over the clip itself. This means one, when you put the effect on, you'll see the results straight away. Secondly, if you need to go in and amend the controls for an effect, it will allow you to actually see what's happening when you update the controls visually. Without having the playhead over the clip, you'll have no actual idea as to what the changing controls is actually doing to the clip. Now there's two main ways of applying an effect to a clip. The first one is you drag and drop the effect onto the clip itself. As you can see there, this is turn the shot black and white immediately. To access the controls for the effect, what you then need to do is keep the clip selected on the timeline and click on the effects controls tab up here next to the source monitor. In here, you then see any controls that are available for the clip itself. This is the black and white effect I've just added. There are two main sets of controls that you'll see in here. Any controls for any added effects that you've just put on. And also there are a range of controls for what's called intrinsic effects for both video and also for audio. These are always there. You don't need to apply these. They're always available to any video or stroke video audio clip. And we'll be looking at those a little bit later. As for the black and white effect, this is the type of effect that just does what it does. There's no real controls for it. One of the things that is universal for any effect is this little, little effects button here in the effects controls tab. If you toggle that on or off, that toggles the actual effect on and off. So you can see the clip going from black and white back to color and black and white again. The curly arrows here are reset buttons. Now there is no way of resetting this effect because there's no controls that you can amend to then reset. So let's have a look at putting another effect on where we have some controls that we can play around with. I'm going to close image control up and go into blur and sharpen and we're going to grab a blur effect. I'm going to take this fast blur here. Now, a second way of applying an effect is you make sure that your clip is highlighted on the timeline and then just double click on the effect itself and that will also add the effect to the clip on the timeline as you can see here because I've got the clips effects controls open it's also added the controls for the effect to the effects controls tab here here's the fast blur actually another quick thing to mention is uh, this little effects button here when you add effects to clips on the timeline this button goes purple for added effects it's gray when there's no effects on 
you apply an intrinsic effect, it turns yellow. If you put both an intrinsic and an added effect on, it actually turns green. And again, we'll look at that a little bit later on. Okay, the fast blur effects. As you can see, there, there's been no actual result on the clip itself. I have to make some changes to the control. So look, let's increase the blurriness. As you can see, the shot starts to go blurred. I'm going to tick this repeat edge pixels tick box here. That just fills in around the edges of the uh, frame itself. Make sure the blur fits all the way to the edges of the screen. And let's also adjust this uh, horizontal and vertical option here and just switch this to a horizontal blur. Now I mentioned reset buttons. There are four reset buttons for this effect. There is an overall reset button here, which if I click on resets everything back to its original settings. And then there are individual resets for each of the parameters in the effect. So let's just uh, make a few changes again. We'll have a, look, a quick look at those. Blurriness, um, this is a control here that has a number of value applied to it. There's two ways of actually amending this. I can click inside and type in a value and hit enter and that will apply that value to the control. I can also move my mouse over the number so I get a little white hand symbol with a couple of arrows on here. If I then hold the mouse down and drag right or left that will increase or decrease the value of that parameter. As you can see that affecting the blur as I increase or decrease it. Quite often with this type of numeric control there might also be a slider. If I open the little triangle up there you can see look there's the slider and that is also a, a way of increasing or decreasing the amount. Uh, let's tick repeat edge pixels and let's switch this to horizontal again. I mentioned individual reset buttons a second ago. I mentioned the in individual reset buttons. Let's have a quick look. If I click the reset button for the horizontal option there, as you can see that switches it back to its default setting which was horizontal and vertical. And that would be the same for any of the other parameters. I'll click on the reset for that parameter and it resets it back to its original settings when the effect was applied. Let's add a third effect. I'm going to just close blur and sharpen up and we'll go into color correction this time. And I'm going to add a similar effect to the black and white one called tint. Now when I drop this on, initially this also turns the clip black and white. The big difference with the tint effect though is I can actually change the tint colors of the clip. So I'm going to click on this little color swatch here for the matte black too. That will open up my Adobe color picker. I can pick a hue by dragging this slider up and down here and I simply click in the big square where I want to set the brightness and saturation of the color or the hue that I've picked. And I click OK. That's going to tint all of the darker areas of the shot a blue color. There's also the same option to tint the highlights of the shot and there's also an overall amount for this where you can vary the amount of the tint applied to the clip. Now the main reason for adding this third effect is so I can show you how the order of the effects works when they're applied to a clip. I just close up the disclosure triangles for the effects themselves just to make things a little bit easier to see. You can see we've now got three added effects. So the first one I added was the black and white effect. The second one was the fast blur. The third one was the tint. Now the way that the effects work in terms of how they affect the clip is thus. The topmost effect, the first one that was added, only affects the shot itself. The next one down affects the result of the previous effect. The next one down again affects the result of the previous two effects and so on and so on. Because of this, depending on the order that you apply an effect, you may get slightly different results. As a general rule, if you've got two effects on that deal with a similar area, so for example we've got the two tint type effects, black and white and tint, the order that you apply them in may result in a different overall result. If you have more than one effect that have absolutely nothing to do with each other, so for example like the black and white effect and the fast blur, which are dealing with completely different areas, then the order that you apply them in probably won't make any difference. So I first will take the fast blur. I'm going to try and put it above the black and white effect by just dragging it up in the little window there. And as you can see, the result over here hasn't changed. If I take it and drag it down to the bottom of the three effects, again, the result is exactly the same because blur has nothing to do with tint or black and white. However, if I take the black and white effect and put it underneath the tint effect so that it's affecting the result of the tint, suddenly we get a change. And that's because the black and white effect now is turning the result of the tint effect black and white. Or if I take the tint effect and move that below black and white, again, different result, because now the tint is going after the black and white effect and is affecting the result of the black and white effect. To remove an effect, in the effects controls, you highlight the effect you want to remove. 
and you hit backspace to delete it. So look, let's remove the black and white effect, let's remove the tint effect. If I just open the tint up once again, there is a set of additional controls that I haven't touched on yet, and we're gonna look at these in more detail in a, a later tutorial. It's these three options here. These are mask options, and these allow you to limit the area of the effect on the screen via a circular mask, a rectangular mask, or a freehand shape that you can draw yourself. Just to give you an idea of this, if I hit the circular mask option here, as you can see, that is now limiting the tint effect within this circular area. I can adjust this by clicking on the control points that are available and dragging those out or in. I can also move it around by dragging in the center. There's a little handle here, which if I drag out, feathers the edges of the mask, makes them softer. And there's also a, an inner handle here, which if I drag out, expands the mask or contracts it. And finally, I can create additional points on the edge of the mask by clicking on it and dragging those out. And I also get what's called Bezier handles, which allow me to change the angle of that curve and also to expand or contract it. In effects controls, as soon as you apply a mask, there's some additional controls. So here's the uh, feather amount there, where I added the feather. There's the expansion setting there from where I expanded the mask. And this option here allows me to change the opacity of the mask, which affects the amount of the effect within the mask itself. Final thing is I can invert the mask so that the area outside is affected by the effect rather than inside and another thing I can do which we'll be looking at in a later tutorial is I can use these buttons here to track whatever the mask is over so I could place this over the cyclist's head here tighten it up and have the mask follow the cyclist through the shot to remove the mask all I do is come back up to effects controls click on where it says mask one there and again hit backspace mm -hmm.